So the Ghetto Cinderella, Sammy Joe Luxton. Nice to have you here on Studio Talks. Thank you. I've had Jord here who also fights out of top team and I don't know what it is about that place but the energy feels different um, obviously some amazing fights come out of there what makes the place so special it definitely is a family vibe so I obviously joined quite late on so the fighters were already established when I joined and in some gyms they can sort of push you away because they don't think like you're good enough um, but they all welcomed me with like open arms and then made me feel like part of the team mm -hmm. um, they're all just so lovely, but at such a high level, like it's hard to come by, like with that mixture. So um, I feel like I've picked up a lot of MMA quicker than others because of the environment that I'm actually. And you say MMA as well, but you fought on Mayweather's last show. Um, and was that your boxing debut on that show? Yeah, boxing debut. And so how did you find transitioning from MMA um, to boxing? Because obviously you're a good all-rounder and so how did you find that transition so with Muay Thai I started off doing that obviously punching kicking elbow kneeing um and then I decided that my legs were strong enough but my boxing wasn't so then I started adding just boxing sessions in um so I really enjoyed the boxing aspect of it and learning something new because obviously it's new footwork new head movement and different things like that so when I got the opportunity to fight I was all for it um there was a few moments before where people made jokes like don't go head kicking I thought oh my god like I'm actually gonna head kick someone so that was the only panic like just because I've done it for so long I thought oh my god what if my leg just comes flying up but I sort of told myself like once the boxing boots are on it's basically like I'm stuck to the floor um so then I, I just put it together and then I feel like it came naturally to me as a boxer when boxing. Uh, and that was the first time I think that I've met you uh, and I, when I met you, you with all your family. So how do your family find the fight and how do they find being at the shows? Are they nervous or what? how do they feel about it all? So when I first started, I was 11, 12 years old. My mum hated it. So my mum used to never come. It used to be my dad. Um, my dad's like a big, tough guy, like one of the lads. <laughs> and... Um, he used to step up and down, up and down, up and down. And I wish back then there was like the little watchers to see how many steps we'd done because <laughs> he would have done thousands. Um, but someone said to my mum, what happens if she gets hurt and she wants her mum? So from that point, my mum was like, I need to be at every fight. My mum brings like a tea towel or a towel and she just covers her face. Um, so my dad is, he gets pissed off because he's like, why am I paying 50 pounds for you to come in and you're not even gonna watch? Um, but. I went to the World Games in Malaysia. My mum ended up taking four weeks off work and then came out to Malaysia with me. Oh, wow, amazing. Yeah. I love that. And so you say there that you started when you were 10, 11? Yeah, 11. 11. What do you think 11-year-old you would think to you now and how far you've come and what you've done? I think 11-year-old me would be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. Like, from very young, I've just wanted to be an athlete, whether that was athletics, netball, whatever. And as soon as I started fighting, it just clicked. And like you know like it's when you know you know and um, so i told everybody it's going to be my job it's going to be my job and i went through all of school but basically the teachers being like well you have to focus on this because fighting's not going to be a full-time job and here i am fighting as a full-time job so i can safely say i've made it and piss the teachers off <laughs> yeah, fuck the teachers yeah i like it um and then what drives you so uh what is it that you fight for what is it that you want to do in the future like what's the bigger picture what's the plans so realistically i fight for my family so my mum and dad put a lot of time, money, effort into driving me all over the country, flying me across the world, training camps, fights, whatever. And then my sisters sort of lost out on time for my mum and dad because they were with me. So I feel like I owe it to them. So like I'm trying to get to the top and like pay off my mum and dad's mortgage, um, obviously like gift my sisters things they want because they sort of lost out because all the money was going through to me. But I told them like my mum and dad had a vision, like they were doing it so we, the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So um, give them nice things and then set them up for a nice life. Nice. And um, speaking to you sound really grounded. Uh, you've definitely got your head screwed on. But growing up, what were some of the biggest lessons that you learned in life? Like what happened to sort of make you the way that you are? Uh, so I feel like my mum and dad are just, very on it 
-hmm. so i used to go to fights and i used to win a lot and then obviously as a kid like you don't realize that the ego is like getting to you and i went to a fight show and then it was a tournament and i got on the scales and i had girls looking over my shoulder and as soon as they saw the weight they started crying because i was in their category and it, from that point i started going yeah well i'm gonna beat everybody and then my mum and dad sat me down and they were like look you can't go doing that because like you're going to get hurt and you're going to take a loss and then I sort of like said no I'm gonna win I'm gonna win it all and the ego got the best of me I was probably like 13 14 so I didn't really know any better and then I took a loss and then my mum and dad sat there and went told you so <laughs> so it was probably from that point that I just like kept on a neutral and been like I have to keep on training I have to keep my head in the game um and then also I know that like you're quite a role model to a lot of people. Um, and so I wondered what like advice you would give to someone who is growing up, sort of the young generation who sees you and aspires to fight um, and all the other things that you do as well. Like, what would you give them in terms of advice? Um, don't just put all your eggs in one basket because you'll end up having the dry out. So I put everything into fighting. I was training constantly through the day. I wouldn't go out and see my friends. I wouldn't do just life. And then I got sucked into a black hole and then it got to a point where I just couldn't do it anymore and I burnt out. So I feel like I took myself off for a little bit and I came back and I was able to do fighting, but then life at the same time. And I feel like I found a good balance of things to do. So that's what I tell people, like if they're trying to get into it, like just make sure you're living your life as well as enjoying fighting at the same time. And um, you do OnlyFans as well, which is quite an interesting thing, I think, for people to do. It's uh, especially with your fighting style as well it's like a contrast between what you do um, which i think is so cool but can you explain that like what made you want to get into that um and how have you found doing that because i guess it could be quite a brutal area to work in yeah so i feel like growing up like i was very tomboy mm -hmm. and then everybody just saw me as literally like one of the lads like so it's an area where i can like be really feminine and like i love dressing up like hair and makeup doing all that love taking pictures so to put that on a site where I can interact with fans as well. So it's just where I can talk to them. I love talking to people on Instagram DM, but obviously as I'm growing as a person, like there's too many to go through at this point. So then if they really want to speak to me, like they can fund the fighting lifestyle as well. Cause obviously like fighting is expensive. So like it slowly adds up. So they love like subscribing to my site and then talking to me one-to-one because -one they know what their funds are going to. Like someone um, paid for all of my strength sessions. So he pays oh, wow. me every week to make sure I'm getting my strength session. So I'm getting something out of it. He's feeling good about himself because he's then funding. When like, I get to the top, he can be like, well, I was bought in that. So yeah, yeah. it's a good thing, yeah. Shout out to that guy, by the yeah. way. Smashing it. Uh, and so also most people, people transition from being a influencer to getting into the boxing scene. But I feel like you've kind of gone about it a different way. So you're already fighting and then you've now sort of moved into that scene. Can you talk about that and how you're finding the influencer scene? So when I was growing up, it was literally all just about fighting. And usually it was just like your friends and family come to watch. Obviously fighting as a sport, has got so much bigger, obviously with like the influencers jumping on it now, um, that everybody has now realized that you need to start branding yourself, um, especially for after your fight career, because once you stop fighting, like you see people just drift off and they become a nobody. And obviously money wise, time wise, like that's scary. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would start like branding myself. Um, and as I've got bigger, I've sort of like dipped my toes into the influencer scene. So like I've done a few um, things with Misfits and Kingpin now. So I'm really enjoying that. But to get to know the people, like the influencers doing the boxing and things, it's actually really nice because talking to them it's you're talking to them about fighting which is what i love yeah. so and i've created like some friendships that probably will last a lifetime now through influencer boxing mm -hmm. so i quite like it and i saw that you were with Elle as well Elle brook what have you learned from her as she sort of taught you some stuff in terms of that scene yeah so um i went down to hers for two weeks to do a training camp with her uh, mainly sparring um she's a really good fighter she lives and breathes boxing so it's basically like living with another fighter um but she gave me a lot of tips about social media obviously because she was an influencer first um and a lot about hate and how to deal with it so i feel like i've taken that on board and now like i'm not scared to push my social media and i know how to do it alongside my fighting and can you share any of those tips that she gave you so it's mainly to do with the comments yeah um so she basically said they're not paying my rent they're not feeding me they're not feeding my family and then that sort of like put it in my brain like yeah they are just 
strangers and it's easier said than done to just listen to people be like yeah but they don't know you but like when it comes from someone who's getting all of them hateful messages like if you scroll on our profile she gets hundreds of hateful messages but it's just because she's doing well so to see it come from someone else who actually experiences it that's sort of what made me click on to being like they actually are strangers like it doesn't mean a thing because mm -hmm. i'm doing my life for my life yeah yeah uh, i also want to talk to you a little bit about pfl um so you have your debut with pfl and then they debut with pfl um how did you get on that show because that's pretty impressive to be fair to have not fought then onto pfl like how did that work so it all started out when i had a tweet go viral um so they must have seen the tweet I saw that I was a fighter and sort of deep dove into my fights um, and they soon realized that I love a scrap. Um, <laughs> so they contacted my manager and then basically said, um, would she ever transition to MMA? Obviously, I've spoken about MMA before and how I'd love to because I want to complete all the sports. Um, so then he said, yeah, I think she's up for it. Um, but obviously, I hadn't done any wrestling or anything like that. So I just upped and moved to Manchester um, just to work at my groundwork at Manchester top team. And you were at Newcastle as well, watching the fights there. And there was about four or five girls fighting who were the same weight class as you. Yeah. Um, seeing them fight, what did you think? Were you thinking like, yeah, this is going to be good. Like, is there anyone that you want to fight out of those people? Yes, I was a bit nervous to actually just go watch. Yeah. Because I thought, oh my God, like if I watch these girls and they're knocking each other out, like I'm going to be scared to fight them because obviously they're in my weight and they're going to be in the Europe League, um, which is what I'm aiming for next year. Um, but as I was watching it, like I could see errors in their fight game, obviously, which I could pick apart. I feel like I'm a very good striker. Um, I'm aggressive. Um, I've got a good defense as well. Um, and now with my wrestling and jujitsu, I feel like I've come on a lot just from being at the gym. So I feel like I'm very all-rounded now to be a fighter. And there wasn't any stoppages. Um, a lot of them just kept it going for the three rounds just to win on points, but I'm going for stoppages. Like, I'm in for the kill. And was there anyone there that you just want to like go for? Is there anyone that any name, names that stand out that you want to go for? Uh, no names in particular. Yeah. Um, I'll just fight anybody in the league. Yeah, I love that. Um, and so George was here on the last podcast, and I when I when you got here, I gave you the book that he gave to me uh, as a gift. I was wondering if you had anything to pass on to the next person who's going to be on the podcast. So hopefully they'll like fighting or want to pick up fighting because I brought a pair of clubs. I love that. Thank you so much. You so I will pass those on to the next person. Uh, and yeah, I really appreciate you coming and being so honest as well I think that's really great that you can talk the way that you do and share advice with people and uh, I really appreciate it so thank you very much thanks for having me